Hi friends, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Welcome back to another monthly wrap up. I know I'm early. I have some explaining to do. If you did watch my last wrap up last month, you'll know I'm taking a couple weeks off. I will still have content up, but just not as much. I'll have it a little bit scattered and that is because I am going away and I'm already away when you see this but I'm recording it early so I can do a wrap up of what I've watched this month thus far and trust me I will not be watching too much more because I'll be quite busy. I'm going to get married and I'm going on my honeymoon which is driving around a countryside so I will not be watching a lot of movies or TV. So I hope that you go easy on me for that but don't worry I still have a lot of content that I've watched up to this point during this month thus far so you will need a paper and pen as always as we go through everything I watched this month and the TV shows because I I don't know what's wrong with me but I'm just picking up more shows I think I've got four on the go right now it's a problem <laughs> but before we get into it a lot of people ask me how do I watch so much content where do I find it all well, something that's helped me greatly is today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. Not only do they encrypt your information and protect your identity online, but they also unlock geoblock content. So if there's, you know, a movie you want to rent in a certain country, you can just flick a switch and you're there. I honestly use Surfshark almost every day of my life. And I like that your subscription is available on unlimited devices. So not only do I have it on my phone, but I have it on my laptop and I can have it on my smart TV completely unlimited. Surfshark has a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee so if you've heard about VPNs and you've considered trying one out why not give it a go with my code SPOOKY there's also a link below in the description. Try it out for 30 days if you're not completely satisfied you can get your money back no questions asked. Why not unlock some fresh content today again you can use my code SPOOKY and with that you'll get three months extra for free and 83% off. Thank you so much to Surfshark for supporting creators like me. And now let's jump into it because we have so much to talk about. Okay, all the way back to the start of the month, the first movie I watched this month was The Twin. Okay, I did a whole review on this one. It's very convoluted. It's a very interesting ride uh, and I probably wouldn't recommend it but I have a whole review on it if you do want to check it out. When you go into this film they present a whole bunch of horror subgenres and you're not really sure which way it's going to go and I was kind of disappointed with the route they chose. I then watched Cleveland Abduction. I do have not really a review on this but more of a conversational type video that's coming out on my Patreon. If you do want to sign up to my Patreon it's only $2 a month and you get all my bonus videos. That's a bonus video every single week of the whole year. So it's an extra 52 videos a year. But anyway, I have a video coming out where I talk about this one. I watched this. Um, I shouldn't laugh. It's a really, really bad subject matter and it is based on a true story. But it sparked a lot with me because I obviously have been talking a lot about true crime and fictionalized crime as well. Uh, when I did my recent video about true crime doco series. It made me think a lot about the fictionalized ones, especially with like The Staircase and The Girl from Plainville. Um, and this one is just a very odd film because it stars Taryn Manning, who for me, I think she's a great actress, but she just picks the weirdest films. Anyway, this is a Lifetime movie that is on Netflix, which is very bizarre, but it's based on a true story. I would not recommend it. It is very strange <laughs> and um, yeah, just very strange to have on a, a Netflix as well. Um, moving on, I watch Host. I watch this because I know this is not meant to be a plug, but I watch it because on my Patreon we just switched over from using Skype to using Zoom for our hangouts. And of course, Host is the Zoom horror movie. Um, Host, if you have not seen it, it's during the pandemic, the lockdown, a bunch of people get together and they do this seance online. It's totally a popcorn horror, immersive experience, and one that you want to watch on your computer. It just makes it 10 times as great. Uh, yeah, it's just a fun movie and really fun to watch with friends, but there's like not really a lot of depth to it, but that's fun sometimes. Sometimes we need that, you know? I finally watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, I really wanted to see this in the cinema and I just didn't get around to it. It is <laughs> complicated, but obviously it's based on the preacher personality. Tammy Faye um, and her life through the 70s and 80s. Um, she's like an icon, I guess, in a way, but she did, she did a lot of good stuff, even though it's obviously based more on her religious work and all that kind of stuff. 
I I was kind of disappointed by this because I'd heard a lot about her and um, I've just seen a lot of like not documentaries but a lot of people talk about her on YouTube and do um, content. I watch like Fundy Fridays who I, I absolutely love her and um, she's done some really good content on her and I was hoping that we were going to see more of that and I felt like it was, I mean it's a drama obviously but I just don't think it represented her very well. I also think the actress Jessica Chastain, she just didn't um, work for me. She doesn't look anything like her and I know that doesn't have to be the case but she just looks so different, so different. And I don't know, it just didn't feel like it was about the same person. I feel like that's a very odd thing to say because I know a lot of people loved that movie, but for me, it just wasn't like spot on. And I think we've seen so many good um, character stories where people really get in to the zone and represent that person. And I just didn't feel like she was very well represented in this. Um, I watched Mary. A lot of people told me not to watch this. <laughs> Uh, for years and I was working and I was like, oh, I'll just chuck this on the background and then I ended up, you know, just fully watching it. Um, I'm deceased at this review. <laughs> uh, so this uh, is a horror movie that was on, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix in all countries, but it's on Netflix here. Um, it's about this boat, the Mary, um, and it is so dark. The whole movie is just in the darkness and it's so... Um, it's just so hard to see anything that's going on, but it's, you know, meant to be like this haunted boat that like possesses people and how people have gone, disappeared on it and the story and then people, yeah, it all happening again to one family, basically. It's it's pretty much a haunted house, but the boat, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Amityville, but a boat. Um, but it was so dark, I couldn't see anything that was going on. And what I could see, I wasn't into anyway. You can see a lot of people have rated this pretty low, so there you go. Um, the blurb is, a struggling family buys an old ship at auction with high hopes of starting their charter business only discover her horrifying secrets on isolated open waters. Yeah, it wasn't for me and my review was the gif. <laughs> you know the gif where he's looking at the piece of paper and he can't see it? That's me trying to see anything in this film. I was watching it on my like my desktop computer and I was literally had my face against it trying to see anything that was happening. Anyway, would not recommend. <laughs> um, I watched Shepherd. Uh, I did this for a Patreon review. When, when I don't have stars next to it, it's because I'm doing it for a review either way um, on my channels. Um, and uh, Shepherd was one that I spoke about coming to VOD this month and <sighs> it was... It's, I don't know, it's interesting, I guess, but uh, there was a few things that I just couldn't get past. It's very over the top with its metaphors, so much so that the metaphors just take over the whole story and they're not like in a subtle, um, creepy way. Uh, I did not um, enjoy this one, but I think that a lot of people will be on the fence. If you're into slow burns, I think that can be interesting, but um, there's not a lot more to it, to be honest. Beautiful landscapes, but um, it's felt a little bit hollow, so... I'd be interested to hear if any of you have seen this one and what you think, but it is out on VOD now. But I probably wouldn't recommend it to majority of people unless you like really, really slow burns and you're into the idea of how metaphors translate on screen. Maybe it would be interesting if you're writing something um, to analyze it in that regard. Um, I watched The Daughter. This I was so excited to see because obviously I've been on a kick with my Spanish thrillers recently and um, one of my favorite Spanish actors was in this film and I was so excited to go see it at the cinema and see it on the big screen. This film is brutal. One of the better films I've seen this year for sure. Um, it is about a, a girl who's pregnant and she goes and gets like shelter and um, runs away and lives with this family that have an agreement to have her baby, um, like to take her baby. But then obviously there's like a lot of emotions going on and things get Things escalate really quickly. Um, it says it was an adventure when, when I looked at the IMDb page. It, it's, I was very shocked at that because it all takes place in the same location. But the ending of this film is so brutal and so out of left field with the rest of the feeling. But I really liked that. Um, usually I wouldn't be one for that. But they spent the whole start of the film introducing the characters, getting you to know the characters, their intentions, their motives, and then they like give you this full thrilling ending and it was really well um, constructed in that way because you were just eating out of the palm of their hands. I really liked this movie. Very shocking, very brutal, very fun. 
<laughs> um, Kimmy, I was glad to see this one too. Be excited while I am right now because there's some real stinkers coming up soon in what I watched. Um, but I did watch Kimmy and uh, this is one that I put off for so long. Um, Steven Sonderberg. Sonderberg. I don't know, people get mad at me when I said that a different way in a, um, a video about Unsane. But anyway, Kimmy, love this. Was not what I thought it was going to be at all. Um, this is a really interesting kind of thrilling dark mystery um, about a woman who works with like a almost like a Siri or like I, I'm whispering in case yours hears <laughs> you know like a Google dot <laughs> you, know? Um, you know like a AI assistant and um, she hear, she tries to translate things she hears so they can um, fix the AI and you know make it more user friendly and one day uh, she hears something horrific and then she gets like obsessed with it but it's a lot to do with her like personal struggles um, she has agoraphobia and yeah very interesting shot awesomely like the cinematography in these films are always like so interesting and captivating wasn't a huge fan of the ending but I think it's a pretty solid like watch on a Sunday night film so definitely put this on your list and it's good to watch with a partner who's not into horror or anything like that it's not too brutal so um definitely recommend it for that she's just like a fun person to watch um the character under the vet <laughs> I don't know what what is wrong with Netflix they keep putting up these like lifetime movies recently and I just don't understand what's going on um but I watched the killer under the bed um and I could not remember straight after seeing this I'm like what was that movie even called because it does not suit the name at all it's about a voodoo doll <laughs> um and as much as I like this is this is a crap movie. It's a crappy movie. There's something about it that was so like scratching that itch for me with like B grade, C grade, probably Z grade movies. Um, but it's about a girl who um, moves to a new town and everyone's mean to her. Her sister, new girl at school, all that jazz. And then she finds a voodoo doll and, you know, starts to use it. And it's just, it's just Lifetime meets a voodoo doll. And I don't know what I ever did to deserve this movie being made, but I kind of love it in a really bad way. Which is why I give it the middle score, because it's not a good film. It's probably one of the worst films I saw this month, but it's so satisfying. And it's it gives you exactly what you think you're going to get from it. And there's something just comforting in that. I know people understand what I mean, especially with horror lovers. Sometimes you just have those bad movies that you just go back to and I, I really liked this one in a weird way. But I'm so sad that it doesn't have a title to do with voodoo and it doesn't have anything to do with the voodoo. I mean, you can kind of maybe see it in the... No, I just wish there was a voodoo doll on the poster. I probably wouldn't have watched it, but um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, enjoy that one. I'd love to hear if anyone else has seen that, um, what you think. And if you're into like that kind of cheesy stuff, it's like actually fun content when you're sick. I don't know if you feel the same way, but you kind of like in this daze, in this fever dream and you watch this stuff. It's really interesting. Um, I watched Firestarter, the original, um, and then obviously I did the remake. I did a review for that if you want to watch that. Um, the original was interesting. It's a very strange story because it starts on like they're on the run and it, you know, it uses flashbacks to take you back and to explain like the origin. And I think it's just a very interesting way that Stephen King set up that story so I feel like I need to read the book one day and kind of try and understand all the context around it but it what really uh, bugged me about the new one was they didn't change that kind of structure um, I mean they did but uh, they didn't give it like more interesting opening than than that but anyway the original five star is pretty interesting I think that all of the acting is solid just the story itself and the way it is structured and played out doesn't really work for me. I know a lot of people think it's a classic. I don't think that the original is the greatest movie ever. Sure, it's really fun to watch Drew Barrymore as a child, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's perfect by any means. Um, the Forest! I went back. I wanted to go back and watch this one, and so funny, actually, after I watched it, I watched my review I did years ago, like in 2016 when it came out. This film, I'm so conflicted on it, to be honest. So it is about the Japanese forest um and uh twins that one of them goes into the forest and the other one across the side of the world can feel her twin is in danger that twin thing you know and so she flies over to go like save her and they all tell her don't go in the forest don't walk off the path and what does she do you know um it has some jump scares in it it's kind of 
it's kind of okay. I don't like the lead's performances. That's the big thing for me. Uh, I just don't find her very believable. And the end is atrocious. Uh, it's hard because they've, everyone's tried to tackle this subject matter and I have not seen the other one. Um, I just don't want to keep saying the name, but this one, I haven't seen that one yet. Um, just because I can get flagged from YouTube from saying those names. But uh, I don't know. Is, is it worth seeing that if I, ha if I didn't like The Forest? Please let me know that. Um, in the comments down below. I haven't heard good things about that one either. So I just want to see, do I want to see a good horror movie? Maybe we should just not be doing a horror movie on these topics. I don't know. I just haven't seen a good one yet and everyone's trying to cash in on it. It was just on Netflix and I just thought I'd give it another shot, but um, I think I liked it probably more than my initial review, but yeah, still not a solid watch for me. I did watch Our Father. This is actually a Blumhouse documentary. Crazy. Um, and this one is on Netflix, I believe, as well. Uh, very interesting story. I'm sure you can tell <laughs> even by looking at this what it's about, hopefully. I think I had heard about it beforehand, so I already knew. But it's basically, let, let's leave read the blurb because I don't want to give away too much if it hasn't done that in the marketing. After a woman's at at home DNA test reveals multiple half siblings, she soon discovers the shocking scheme involving donor sperm and a popular fertility doctor. Well, I mean, draw your own conclusions, but there's more to it. And it's just really interesting to see the way he reacts and um, all of the interviews. And I think it's just a really interesting subject because yeah, I mean, you get into it in the documentary, but I just think it's so interesting to think of these um, these little slices or strange things in life that aren't technically against a technical written law but moral you know morally like it's just so interesting to see these pop up in court cases and um, yeah it's 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 fascinating um, so yeah I actually really do recommend this documentary if you haven't seen it check it out it's definitely worth a watch um, in my opinion he's so creepy um, I watched Senior Year because I like Rebel Wilson. I don't know why. I just think she's fun. She's Australian, so I'm down. And <laughs> before we get to all the bad stuff, which, you know what? I'm actually surprised. All the, there's some good re um, reviews here or like, you know, not bad scores. Um, the girl who plays her young, she's so great. Um, <laughs> and she's from Perth where I am. So uh, I think she's fantastic. And um, she was great in this film. And the film was great until Rebel Wilson came in. I don't know why, but it just like kind of worked in the opposite way. So it's about Rebel Wilson um, when she's young and she wants to be popular and she wants to be like the popular girl at school. And then um, she, after an accident, she goes into a coma. She wakes up, you know, what is it? Probably like 30 years later as um, Rebel Wilson, I, mean, I guess 20 years later. And um, she like wants to go back to high school and still be popular. So it's <laughs> so, like a little bit like, um, what do you call it? Never been kissed. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It was just really cringy. I didn't like the humor. I thought it was really off. It just w didn't hit for me. It just felt really awkward. The whole thing was really, really awkward. And yeah, I just, when I see these things, I'm like, I can't help but think I'm just not the core demographic for this anyway, but usually I get enjoyment out of it. But it really gave me his all that vibes. Like it really did. I, I hadn't felt that kind of cringe, that like particular cringe in a while. Um, yeah, I would not recommend that one. <laughs> I wanted to be like, oh, cool, fun, you know, like feel good, like a nice escape from like watching some horror. Absolutely not. <laughs> Um, I watched The Devil's Tale. This is a new anthology horror movie that's out at the moment. Um, and it's meant to be from the female perspective, I believe. Like, that's the idea behind it. Unfortunately, as we know, anthologies are only as strong as, like, their weakest film. But if you go into this knowing it's an independent, you know, collection of work, collection of short stories, I honestly don't think it's that bad. Um, and they do have some unique ideas, but just some of it's just... I don't know, not acted well, not put together well, just pretty rough. But I watch these kinds of films and I watch them in hope that these filmmakers who work really hard and you can see they have creativity and uniqueness to what they're trying to do will get like a boost and go somewhere from this. If not, make connections in what they do. So it doesn't make me so sad to watch this kind of stuff that I know isn't going to be great, but it gives me hope that there's some, you know, uniqueness out there just like hidden in the corners of the earth. 
So yeah, I don't think this one was that bad, but I went into it knowing it was going to be like independent anthology and I'm not a huge anthology fan, so smack bang in the middle for me. But if you are looking for an anthology, just easy to watch, passes the time, couple of like scary moments, some disturbing moments too. Um, the Devil's Tale, but I would not say it's anything you need to put at the top of your to-watch list for sure. Um, I watched Mad God. I don't want to talk about this too much because I have content coming out about it on my Patreon. I'm sorry I'm saying that. It's just because I've got stuff stockpiled for when I go away. So I'm going to leave that one. Um, it's not out until next month anyway on Shudder. Um, I watched Bad Samaritan. Samaritan? depending where you're from. This is like a solid um, like thriller film, but not like, not great, but it's like a fun kind of, it reminds me of Disturbia in a way. Um, and I watched it because it's got this fella in it. Um, where is he? The Irish actor, if you've seen him before. Oh, he's in Umbrella Academy. For me, he's like the Misfits guy. He's just so charming. I love him. He's just really charming. And it's about him and his friend who are breaking into people's houses. And when he breaks into someone's house, he sees something that he cannot unsee and from that moment his life is changed. Not a like totally original idea, not really anything special, but it's an alright watch if you're looking for a, like an okay thriller to kind of like just chill out and like turn off your brain to. Um, and he's just so charming that I really like watching him. The production quality is also pretty good, but yeah, nothing original by any means, but a little bit like Disturbia. If you like Disturbia, you might want to check it out. But again, don't bump it all the way up to the top of your to watch list by any means. I watch this one on Prime, so I'm not sure if it's in Prime in other countries as well. Then I rewatched We're All Going to the World's Fair. I did this because my friend Myra wanted to, so I watched it with my patrons. This is such a weird film to talk about, and I did talk about it last time I watched it because this is the second time I've seen it. This film was just not marketed right, but I do think that there's something really unique and special about it and I'm kind of glad I got to see it again. It's a really hard one to rate and it's a really hard one to even put into a genre because it's it's not really a horror movie. It's like this strange character work. It's this expression. It was the same when we were watching it. It's more about a vibe and tapping into that. But it's about a girl who's getting consumed with this online game and becoming part of it and just consumed with content online when she's lonely and isolated. And if you felt that, if you're one of those people that went through that as like a, you know, teen, um, you may be able to really relate to this film, but just go into it knowing it's just a slow burn and it's more about a feeling than any arc or conclusion. You don't really get much from it. You just get this, this feeling it really taps into. It's really well done that it can convey such a unique and personal story, but not in a cohesive way. I can't explain it. I would say it's more like experimental film, um, but yeah. I, I think it's worth a watch if that sounds interesting to you, but if you're not into anything experimental or different, don't watch it because you're gonna hate it. <laughs> and then the last film I watched recently was Dashcam, and there will be a video on my main channel about that, so I don't want to say anything, but watch out. because. <laughs> It's wild. Okay, stop. <laughs> I need to not say anything. So I did watch a lot of movies so far this month. So let's go quickly through what I would recommend to you. The Twin, if you're really stuck for horror and want to watch horror. The Host, if you have not seen it, definitely check it out. Um, Shepherd, if you want a slow horror, but I don't know. Again, not a must. Um, the Daughter, if you can get your hands on that and you like Spanish thrillers, check it out. It's like a thriller drama. Kimmy, recommend. Good, good time. Good thriller. Um, and fun to watch with a bunch of people. Killer Under the Bed, only if you want to, if you want to scratch that itch and watch something really bad that's like intentionally, that you know is going to be bad, but it's kind of fun. Our Father is a good true crime documentary that just came out, and I would recommend it. And I think that's the musts. Um, we're all going to World's Fair if you're into experimental work. But let's talk about TV because I have plenty. Plenty to talk about there too. Okay, so one of the documentaries I recently spoke about in my true crime documentary series video was Love Fraud and I'm gonna drill it in again. I watched that this month and oh my gosh. I went into it thinking, oh, I haven't heard a lot about this one. Usually when those like doco miniseries are like really vibrant and alluring and exciting, you hear a lot of buzz about them. But I didn't hear a lot of buzz about this one, but it was really well produced up to the level of ones that I hear a lot of buzz about. So I am gonna recommend you to watch it again. Um, Love Fraud is about a bunch of women who come together after being wronged by the same man who 
married multiple women at the same time. Like the deeper you go, the crazier it is. And the interviews, the way it's put together is so interesting. They also hire a female uh, bounty hunter and she is just badass. And in, uh, she's just such a character and so interesting. So yeah, I do recommend that one. It's quite short. There's only a couple episodes and the last episode was very strange <laughs> the whole thing is strange but it's really well produced so if you're looking for something that's not too hard to watch very interesting and easy to like get sucked into i do recommend love fraud ozark season four i think it is uh we started watching this this month we're almost at the end wendy is like the biggest villain on tv <laughs> like I swear, I've never seen like a horror villain that I hate as much as Wendy. She's like Megan, you know? Um, if you have not watched Ozark before, it's about, well, it's set in the Ozarks. Ozark? Ozarks? Yeah, I think you can say that. Um, and it's about a man who gets his family involved in a money laundering cleaning scheme and gets tied up with the cartels. And it's just like this crime show, but it has this amazing low buzzing vibe that is like dread i can't i can't even describe it but it's just this amazing um and really unique feel to it it doesn't feel like a full-on crime um show where there's so many crime shows that fit into the same genre it's a genre <laughs> um and that one it just it's so different because it it doesn't try and be this like detective show and a lot of it is just the dialogue and when things happen they happen really quick and it catches you off guard but it's like there's a sense of fear no matter where you turn in that show and I love that also I love the color grading it's like this beautiful like blue green anyway I recommend it usually I wouldn't be into these kinds of shows that like really take a long time to get into and um have so many episodes and they're all so long it feels <laughs> overwhelming but this one I always make time for but <laughs> I've done something bad. My partner and I, like, we got into a bad habit this month. <laughs> I'm so ashamed to say this, but I need to because I need to know if anyone else has done this. We started watching Superstore. It's like the worst comedy I've ever seen. <laughs> if you have not seen it, it's like set in like a Superstore, kind of meant to be like a Target, I don't know, like Walmart kind of situation. It's like the worst thing I've ever seen. And we could not stop watching it because it kept having cliffhangers. Anyway, I just wanted to mention it quickly. I, I can't be the only one who didn't like it because I heard so many people talk so highly about it. And I'm, I could not be more shocked by how bad it was. <laughs> Back onto some good stuff. I started watching Shining Girls with Elizabeth Moss. Um, this is an Apple Plus TV show. It's based on a book um, and very interesting, very strange. Uh, it's about a woman who, it's hard for me to kind of explain because I'm only like halfway through and I haven't really put all the pieces myself together, but it's basically about a woman who was attacked and her memory and things don't seem quite right and she can't keep a track of what's going on and who she is and like objects in her life. It's very strange. And I mean that when I say objects, I mean objects. Um, she's just going in and out of like almost different realities. It's more of a thriller. It's really dark because it's a lot about her attacker and what happened to her and that trauma. Um, I love Elizabeth Moss. I cannot help it. She is like... I love her. So um, yeah, interesting show. It's very slow and I can't wait to see how it unravels. Let me know if you're watching it as well. And another one I'm in the middle of watching is The Circle US. I'm currently waiting for the new episodes to come out, which would have come out by the time you're watching this. So I'm excited to see how that ends. Um, if you haven't watched The Circle, I'm a huge circle head, by the way. If you have not watched The Circle, I'm a big fan. Um, the UK seasons are the best. They're the originals. That's where the show's from. The American one is actually even filmed in the UK. Um, but if you have not watched Circle before, watch the UK ones. They're so different and just so much more interesting. <laughs> um, but it's basically about a bunch of people who are put into an apartment block and they communicate to each other via this thing called the circle which is literally a tv which they talk to and it like types for them <laughs> that's what it is but basically they're like it's like a popularity game and survivor like together 
in the comfort of their own lounge room. So they pretend to be people or whoever they think is going to be popular and make it to the end. And how they get through different rounds is by voting each other. So it's all about alliances and all that kind of stuff. So it's all about gameplay, stirring the pot and all that kind of stuff. So I find it very interesting. And in this season, which is the American season four, the Spice Girls are in it. So it was very fun to see that. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to see how it ends. Even though it's never going to be as good as the UK version, it's still really bingeable content. And um, I know a lot of people like me, when they're not watching horror, they like to watch reality TV to kind of zone out. And so it's been good to get back into that. And then the last TV show that I've just started watching is Made. Um, and I'm only at the very start of this. Let me know if you saw it and liked it because it's been on Netflix for a while. This is a drama TV show. So far, so good. Pretty dark content. Um, more emotional. It's a drama series about a woman who's trying to leave her abusive boyfriend with her child and trying to like make ends meet and figure out how to move. And I think that's a really interesting subject matter that we talk about all the time, but we haven't really seen it on TV in this way. So um, interesting to put that story down um, and, you know, try and tell that uh, and I guess like educate people in a way or, or make people realize how these situations happen. So, so far really, I mean, enjoying it is a hard <laughs> term to say, but I am finding it really interesting. It's not too heavy handed, but it, you know, obviously is going to be emotional and um yeah, I'm really into it. So let me know again if you've seen that one. I really want to know what people are watching right now, especially on Netflix and stuff like that, because I feel like there's no popular like Squid Game thing at the moment and everyone's kind of just watching their own thing. So let me know what TV shows you're watching below. But that's going to do it for today. Um, I hope that that was still satisfying. I'm sure it was still a long video. And thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I can't thank you enough for being here and supporting me. And again, there will still be content out. So make sure you check that out when I pop up in your subscription box. But if I don't pop up in your subscription box, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that button down below and the bell if you want to be notified when my videos do go live. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know below what TV shows you've been watching. I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. <laughs>